One of my all-time favorite things a movie can do is have an entire scene take place in just one single take. It's one of the toughest things to pull off on a movie set because if one thing goes wrong, if one person messes up, if one detail is out of place, then it could potentially take hours and in some cases days to reset and attempt the scene again. On top of that, it can take weeks of rehearsal to get everything just right. And that's why I love this technique. It's a showcase of the cast and crew's passion of the movie they're working on, and it's quite possibly one of the most difficult and stressful things to pull off on set. And for me, there's nothing quite as immersive as a well-done scene that takes place in just one take. But over the past few years, I've noticed some directors using a couple of cheats. These directors are trying to pull one over me. They're trying to trick me, and I'm not too happy about that. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all the techniques that I've seen directors use that are meant to trick you into thinking that you're watching one scene unravel over one single take. But in reality, the scene you're watching actually has more cuts than a teenage girl's inner thighs. So let's get started with what I like to call the fake one take. Let's kick things off with the first technique, which I refer to as the foreground frontal. The first time I ever noticed this technique was five years ago when I saw the trailer for Total Recall. When you look at this scene, you can tell that something's up. I think it's pretty clear that the movie is cutting each time the camera passes by a pillar. And this scene is not helped by the fact that the camera movements are very synthetic and unnatural. But now that you've seen it in action, let me explain. The foreground frontal is a technique that several directors like to use, and for good reason too, because it's a good one. So whenever something passes directly in front of the camera, aka the foreground, and takes up the entirety of the screen for at least one frame, that right there is a hidden cut taking place behind whatever is right in front of the camera. In some cases, whatever passes in front of the camera is actually sometimes computer animated. But as long as these takes are consistent enough, it can make for a seamless transition from one cut to the next. So let's go a little bit deeper. Most recently, I've seen the foreground frontal used in the new Wonder Woman movie, in this scene right here, where we follow her in between these two buildings as she's running, then an explosion blocks the entire frame, and within an instant, Gal Gadot has been replaced by a CG monkey Hulk, and she's just jumping around on some buildings. This one is incredibly obvious to spot, but now you know what we're looking for. Then we got the infamous church scene from The Kingsman. There are so many foreground frontals taking place here that it's almost difficult to keep count. But if you're paying close attention, you can tell that in some instances that both Colin Firth and the camera are clearly in slightly different positions than they were before the foreground frontal occurred. But in this case, it really doesn't matter too much because this scene will always be absolutely awesome. And that is the foreground frontal. The next technique I'd like to talk about is something I like to call the whip cut. This technique is incredibly simple to pull off. It's also very easy to spot once you know what you're looking for. It's mostly used in found footage films as the camera work in those types of movies is frenetic and chaotic. But I'm getting ahead of myself, let me explain. The whip cut is exactly what it sounds like. Whenever the camera whips from one place to the next, mid whip, when everything is at its blurriest, that's where a hidden cut has taken place. So long as each take begins and ends with a consistent camera movement, and this is, as I said, really easy to do, and I cannot stress how easy this technique is to accomplish. But like I said before, the whip cut is used in pretty much every single found footage movie, since it's so simple to utilize, and it's very natural for that type of filmmaking. But it really can make a scene feel like it doesn't have any cuts, when in reality it has several. I think Quarantine used this to great effect. It helped to give that feeling of being trapped within that apartment complex with all these characters. The movie did a really good job of setting up and establishing atmosphere, and then they go and ruin the illusion with something dumb like this. The whip cut also lends itself really well to hide the fact that there's a stuntman on screen. So let me give you a little tip here. One that once you hear it, you won't be able to unhear it, and it might be all you're thinking about. But anytime one of the main actors of a movie is about to perform an activity or fall down or do a stunt of any kind, nine times out of ten, it cuts to an angle where you cannot see that actor's face. This is because they're using a stunt person. And when something like this happens, it's all I can think about. Whenever an actor like Tom Cruise or Jackie Chan performs their own stunt, 
the director always makes a conscious effort to have that actor turn their face toward the camera so that the audience subconsciously registers that the actor actually performed this stunt on their own. Whip cuts are a great way of hiding that a stuntman is being used. Check out this clip right here from The Raid 2. It illustrates it perfectly. Here we have the original actor hopping up on top of the table. Original actor, he's still on top of the table. Then something awesome happens. Cut to a stuntman running on top of the table, jumping through the window and hitting the concrete. And as he hits the ground, the camera flings downward and there's our whip cut. Then it flings back up and that stuntman has been replaced by the original actor. And it all felt like it happened in one take. Freaking seamless. And while I'm talking about it, both of the Raid movies are just absolutely awesome. If you haven't seen them, do yourself a huge favor and check them out. So the third technique I'd like to talk about is what I like to call the consistency cut. That's when the cast and crew rehearse the entire scene and act it out over and over again as similarly as possible. And they do multiple takes of this, multiple takes of the exact same thing every time with everything as similar as possible with the same exact timing. Think of it as sort of like a play on stage. And so long as this technique is done well, which it usually is, this is the toughest technique to spot. I'm pretty sure it was used a few times in The Revenant. There's just, there's something going on in a couple of parts of this movie here. Like, you can see that there's some trickery taking place, but it's really hard to identify and pinpoint exactly where the cuts are. Now, I'm not positive about this one, but I'm pretty sure Alfonso Cuaron was using the consistency cut method throughout this movie. Probably also used it a bit in Birdman. But I know for sure they used a consistency cut in the beginning of James Bond Spectre. Awful movie. It's pretty evident they did too. We got a good 40 second take as we follow James Bond and a bimbo into a building. But before the camera enters the building with these characters, notice all actors are no longer on screen and the camera lingers for a second on the poster on the wall. It's a little bit tough to tell, but it's pretty clear that something has happened here. What has happened, as you've probably already figured out, is a consistency cut. The rest of the scene also uses all the tricks I've mentioned so far in this video. Later on, we get a foreground frontal, followed by a kind of honestly poorly done whip cut, and then the rest of the scene unfolds. Now, I'd like to talk more about consistency cuts, but I haven't caught too many of them, and they're probably very time-consuming and difficult to pull off. But when you pay close attention to these scenes, you can tell that something's up. The final technique that I'd like to talk about is one that I like to call the CG no see. This technique is most prevalent in movies that utilize a lot of computer-generated images. Gravity is an excellent example of this. Each time an actor leaves the frame and all we're left with is essentially a green screen or if the entire frame is just filled with, with computer animation, that means we've been duped by the CG no see. This technique isn't used incredibly often because, you know, it's probably really expensive. It's a seamless way to implement a cut into a scene without having to have something come in front of the camera and without having to jerk the camera around and, and things like that. It helps to give that illusion even more that what we're experiencing is one take when in reality it is not. Another movie that uses this technique is a fancy pants artsy movie called Enter the Void. This movie is like... Imagine Hardcore Henry with no action mixed with Birdman. It's like Birdman in the sense that the entire movie was supposed to feel like one continuous take. And it's like Hardcore Henry in the sense that it, the whole movie takes place from the character's eyes, from the perspective of the character. So when our character does some drugs, he passes out and we get treated to a hippy dippy screensaver for literally three minutes. Not the best movie. It's directed by Gaspar Noe and it's, it's pretty pretentious. I'm sure Avatar used the CG no see at some point too. And um, Tin Adventures of Tintin also definitely utilized some CG no see. Uh, every time we see characters on screen in that movie, they're, they, they are actors being mo-capped. And every time they go off frame, that's essentially a cut. 
But those are all the techniques I've caught on to so far. For all I know, there could be more that I just haven't noticed yet. But let me tell you a little something about myself. When I watch a movie throughout its entire runtime, my mind is going a mile a minute. I am thinking about everything. My brain is going non-stop. And when I see a long take start to happen, I cannot help but consciously look for where they hid some cuts. I ain't gonna let no movie trick me. I'm untrickable, bitch. So to me, a truly memorable movie is one that takes me out of my brain and into the movie. And that's just such a rare experience for me. But I love movies, not as much as games, but I still love them. I think about them a lot, and if I don't know how a certain special effect was done, I will, lit I will think about it while I'm driving the car, or doing dishes, or whatever, until I've come to a conclusion in my head that I'm satisfied with. And you know, I'm not always right, but that's what I've done with all the techniques I talked about in this video. I never went to film school or anything like that, and I don't watch director commentaries anymore because I just don't buy Blu-rays. Everything's online now. Plus, I really don't even have that kind of time anymore like I used to. When I was a kid, I would watch behind-the-scenes featurettes and director's commentaries all the time after school. So if it turns out that I am wrong about certain things I've said in this video, or if I don't know the proper technical terms for these techniques I have described, it's because I'm not a filmmaker, and I haven't had the traditional training of one. But if I got everything I said in this video right, then I'll look pretty badass, won't I? There's not really a huge purpose to this video. I just find this so fascinating. I've always been absolutely obsessed with long takes in movies, so I hope you found this subject matter as interesting as I do, or at the very least, hopefully you learned something. And let me know down in the comments if you have ever noticed things like this, or maybe you just, you never cared. And now that I've talked about it, it's, it's gonna be all you're thinking about whenever you're watching a long take. Or, you know, you could just tell me I'm crazy and I'm focusing on things that don't matter. That's what all my friends tell me. Also, make sure to give this video a like since it seriously helps out a small channel like mine get some much needed exposure. I put a ton of work into these videos, hopefully it shows. Also, while you're down there clicking like, why don't you, why don't you hit subscribe? And lastly, check me out on Twitch over at twitch.tv slash RensReviews. I'm streaming all July over there trying to get over 50,000 gamer score in just 31 days. And you're missing it. It's a blast. Come see it. Until then, I'll see you guys next week.